Let's get serious about this behavior. Let's shut up these alpha males once and for all. Women need to be the gatekeepers here, because as long as pretty women are rewarding these men, not only are they polluting the earth with the very men who will make life miserable for the evolved women, but they are making life hell for everybody. But to get back to the original point of my video, to call somebody with Asperger's mentally ill? If there is a mental illness that makes me smarter... That is not what happens. Nonviolent. Also wrong. Not as loud. I'm not even sure where the heck in that one came in, but it snuck in there between part one of this series and this part. And lets me live invisibly because I finally realize I'm dealing with a different species and I don't need to win over these people who seem to want to set me up. I believe that one is called Paranoid Personality Disorder, right? And it is actually a thing, according to the DSM-5. They first engage me, tell me to come over to their party, and then laugh at me for making an idiot out of myself, when really all I did to make an idiot out of myself was go to the party in the first place. Ray, I'm sorry that that has happened to you, but perhaps if you had even a modicum of self-awareness, we wouldn't be here right now. There's, you know, again, we set people up to fail and we laugh at them. Well, what do you do if I don't play your game? What do you do if I don't care if you like me or not? Well, then, you know, you'll avoid me? For how long? Is that a promise? You know, again, you seem to think that because your food is not in my refrigerator that I should be depressed. What? What? Everybody's like, oh, look at those clothes you wear. Well, who cares? I get to decide if I like my outfit. I wear this because it's the same outfit every time. It's just a uniform. I have the chest set here because it's a prop. It's just a good way to make videos. It doesn't mean I care what you think. I've had people insult my walls in my apartment. If you've ever been in this apartment, it costs a thousand dollars a month. I feel like I have just walked onto the set of Lost because I have no idea what is going on or where this is going or what's happening. Help. It's not a cheap apartment. It's like the people who insult my walls. They say, oh, you're filthy walls. They're not filthy. They may not have been painted in the last few years because I'm allergic to paint, but I could throw a coat on it. But why? That's sudden jump cut. I'm thinking about it. You know the one where he goes from discussing his rent back to discussing the walls again? It's not a cheap apartment. It's like the people who insult my walls. I'm curious. I'm afraid to ask, but I'll do it anyway. How much nonsense was cut out of this video to trim it down to the time that it is? Cause boy, that wasn't enough. Much more important to me is the food that I cook, which is cleaned. I don't have a dishwasher, and you say, oh, he doesn't have a dishwasher. What about his dishes? I pour boiling water over them. You know, problems have solutions. Priorities are not the same. In fact, the people who tended to comment on my house generally are not Aspies, because Aspies have bigger things to worry about. But they're acting like, one, they have the right to judge me. Two, they're superior to me. And three, their opinion matters to me. Why would it? I still have a whole six minutes of this video left. People, this is no longer about responding. This is about my own endurance. Mama's gonna need some help. Martinelli's. <sighs> oh, that's smooth. It's good shit. That's staying in. Look at me, I'm such a lightweight, I can't even drink apple juice properly. Oh, fuck. <sighs> Mama needs to go see a doctor after this. No, I'm supposed to live their way. Well, when they're done telling me what they think I need to know and putting me in my place, they might want to consider maybe they don't know everything. That's another story for another video. But as an Aspie, and I definitely am one, um, I wish I had known more when I was younger because we trust other people, and part of that trust has us going to hang out with people that we really shouldn't even be talking to. You know, we think, oh, it must be us. You know, it's not good to think these are things of people. And I didn't think these things of people initially. But as I saw research on how wolves evolved into dogs and how apes evolved into humans, and I see that an Aspie is clearly some type of evolution. Clearly. 
who only has problems because of the world in which they live and the people around them, I have to start thinking maybe that is the marker, maybe that is the path towards our species' next evolution. I'll have you know, this is not Ray's final form. In fact, it would make sense. Don't we evolve to correct the mistakes of the previous species? Wrong. Evolution is based off of selective breeding practices of the species, contingent upon whether or not certain traits allow for offspring to better surmount real-world challenges. Got him! Our mistakes now are exploited by the sociopath. We complain about sociopaths, but they don't break laws, they just exploit stupidity. Nah. Wrong. They very distinctively lack empathy, and as a result are not encumbered by pesky little things such as do unto your neighbors as you would do unto yourself. However, that does not preclude them from breaking the law in any sense of the word at all. Not even a little bit. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's the damn apple juice. It's your fault for trusting them. A woman sleeps with a sociopath and he doesn't call her. Well, then why did you sleep with him without demanding a wedding ring? Of course, if you do, he'll throw a tantrum because he can't, you know, he, he's dishonest. He, you know, honesty is like kryptonite to him. Testing him for honesty is like kryptonite. Right. Are you telling me that non aspies are sociopaths now? Because that's what it sounds like. And he'll run away saying it's your loss. Well, yes, it's your loss. Taking out the trash is your loss, too. But if you buy into that wolf logic, if you buy into the idea that you have to win over these inferior people who aren't even in your species, yes, you're going to have a problem as an aspie. Tell me, Ray. How do you reconcile the aspie that you come across, who happen to be of your species according to you, who also think that you are an absolute nutcase? There are others out there, I'm sure. On the other hand, if you seek out other aspies, you have simple rules where a wolf will come by and say, oh, I'm not like them, I'm honest, and they'll demand your trust and say, I'm sorry, I don't trust you. Then they'll say, you have issues because you don't trust me. Oh, really? So you come to me, you want me to trust you, and then when I don't, for good reason, you attack me and insult me saying I deserved it. You just proved my point. You know what's sad? I left the coveted Strawman Award at home. It'd be perfect for this video. Absolutely perfect. Fat Pepe Rip, guys. Fat Pepe Rip. I'm sorry, that's my bad. I just have deprived you of another one of the trademark Weibo gimmicks that we also love on this channel. I, I apologize. It's... Oof. I like seeing us evolve towards the Aspie way of life. We need to make violent crime much more serious. If you hit somebody once, I want you in jail for five years. And if you hit somebody twice, or you ever commit that crime twice, I want you locked up for life. If you threaten someone, I want you in jail for three years. And if you threaten someone twice, 10 years. If you threaten anybody three times or three people once, life. But what is the punishment for staging an insurrection that installs totalitarian dictatorship emphasizing the Aspie way of life, Ray? Hmm, can you answer that? I'm genuinely curious, still am, about how Ray's going to take over the unevolved, violent, loud, dishonest, wolf, non-Aspie population with his army of evolved, non-violent, quiet Aspie population. Let's get serious about this behavior. Let's shut up these alpha males once and for all. Women need to be the gatekeepers here, because as long as pretty women are rewarding these men, not only are they polluting the earth with the very men who will make life miserable for the evolved women, but they are making life hell for everybody. It's all the women's fault. They're not facilitating the evolution of the species with the Aspies. Something, I have an inkling, but something tells me that the author of the infamous Love Conquers Nothing book needs to read his own $50,000 book instead. I'm not kidding about that. In 2009, this man, Ray Gordon, this man, he released a single copy of his book for $50,000 online, guaranteeing that reading it would get you laid. There was an article about it and everything. I hope no one paid for this. Just buy a prostitute, guys, come on. So um, women need to get with the program and start seeing which men are smarter, which are more evolved, and which one they want their children to be like. And yes, you can say I'm right in theory, but well, the alpha male has all the money. Money doesn't mean anything when it's not earned. Lance Armstrong's gold medals don't mean anything if he was juicing, which he, I think, admitted to. Um, and when, of course, competing against him, you have to compete against somebody who's juicing, and, you know, again, the whole system falls down. So if you believe the best man should win, you need to rethink what the best man is. It's not somebody loud, stupid, and violent. 
There's a saying in the military, don't fight yesterday's war. Of course, we should be saving our strengths for the Aspie Revolution, whenever that may be. Apparently it's now. The internet has changed the world incredibly, so anything you were told before the internet took over, and even afterwards, before it became obvious that the internet had changed things, probably isn't very accurate right now. That is why I exclusively get all of my information from ChristiansAgainstDinosaur.com. But did you catch that? Nothing is accurate before the internet, but it's also not accurate after the internet as well. Thus, you can't win. And he can't lose. And worse, we have groupthink in the form of Google, who, by the way, is publishing this video and allowing you to think whatever you want. This video was sponsored by Groupthink, now with 100% more individual thought. But Google has a way of causing everyone to rely on the same information. And it's not Google's fault. Google is just a reflection of the society which produced it. And a large part of that society is Groupthink. But Google also gives an equal voice to people like me and to people who are Aspies with differing points of views, and it lets us compete on the open market. On that, we can agree, Ray. The implications of which I am so ever grateful for. <laughs> In fact, if you check my uh, free speech review video, um, I can review sites here. I can even make a negative review of Google, and they would let me put it here. I've done that, actually. I have the Google tax video. But you see, I'm not really criticizing Google anymore because they're consistent. You know what you're getting with them. In a world full of Aspies, Google would adapt. In a world full of wolves and alpha males, Google has adapted. Much like Ray the Aspie. This isn't even Google's final form. You know, they let you lie about people and they don't remove it because they don't have to. They're not legally required to. To them, if you want to make it different, pass a different law. But again, try teaching a group of wolves that it's better to act like a dog and yeah, you're fighting a losing battle. But to anybody with Asperger's, just start thinking about anytime you feel bad about yourself that you haven't won somebody over, did you ever ask for this person's opinion or did they try to force themselves on you? This is what I call a rape opinion. It is a trademark trait of alpha watermelons who exclusively hystericalize with monster energy juice. Oh, I was just being nice. No, they weren't being nice. They were scouting you. That's why they had to talk to you to find out if you're useful to them. To figure out what to do with you. That's unevolved thinking. And Aspie assumes you're another creature, that you're honest, that you belong here, and tries to respect you. So, I've let this slide for long enough, but it's really pissing me off at this point that Ray is speaking on behalf of all Aspies. Aspies. With such a level of authority. Like, who? He knows all. First off, no. Second off, that's not how this works. And third off, that's not how any of this works. And often it's thought weak for doing that. So, uh, anyway, based on the above, or the foregoing, or whatever we would call it in the video, I have to say that Asperger's most definitely is not a mental illness, and to call it such is a crime against humanity, with human, humanity defined as the larger humanoid species. I will give him that. At least he managed to state a coherent thesis argument. <sighs> not even some college students can do that, apparently, but I digress. <laughs> But the rest of this video, whatever it was, was an absolute mindless drivel. And I made it all the way through. Pat myself on the back. Go me. That includes Neanderthals, everything back to the first humanoids, uh, Homo sapiens, and this new species we call Homo sentients, and which everybody else calls Asperger's. Or Aspies. I thought I had nothing left to impart about this video, but it, it does seem, before we get to his outro or whatever, which I'll skip for your benefit, seems that Ray has done a megazord of an oopsie in coining his species name for his little fan club thingy. Because you see, the difference between sapient and sentient is quite literally thinking versus feeling, respectively. Meaning that the unevolved Homo sapiens are the ones defined by their ability to think, whereas the evolved Homo sentient or the Aspie in this case, according to Ray, is simply defined by its ability to feel and to perceive, which is something that every insect, lizard, dog, dolphin, or yes, even us slowly homo sapiens do. So you got us, Ray. You got us real good. Guess what time it is? Mail time. Okay, so.
I've been saving this since before I left for France, but now is a good time to open it. Uh, so this is from Dan, which means that I'm getting a cool drawing. I'm super excited. Oh, come on. Oh, it's taped shut. That's why. You know what I don't have on me? A letter opener. So I'm just going to have to make do. Oh my god. I don't even have my knives on me too, so this is going to be a struggle. I got a little bit. It's good. Okay. Ooh, jingle all the way. Ooh, I'm getting this a little bit later than I anticipated. Apparently this was meant for the holiday season. I did not visit the P.O. box before I left because the day that I left was... Was it a Sunday? It was Friday. I don't know. I left after business hours for the United States Postal Service, so... Unfortunately, I missed this before the holiday season, but I have it now, so yay. Again, from Dan, Jingle All the Way, a nice drawing, and then a nice drawing, or not drawing, painting. I believe it's watercolor still. <laughs> no one wants a half-assed jingler. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate this. I'm sorry I didn't get to it until now. Wow. But um, it's going in place of the Halloween one you sent me. Promise, promise. And that is right next to my computer. Usually I have uh, stuff taped to my tower. Usually it's reminders or it's like achievement type things. I would show it to you, but it's also got my thesis badge from when I, when I turned in my thesis. So I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna dox myself. But the next thing that we have is a package. And I believe that this is from the next six minutes because Sixie told me that he was sending me something in the mail. And so we will see what it is. All right. Sorry, I forgot. I'm supposed to read the notes first. Ugh. I'm so out of practice, you know, because um, I just got back from Christmas break. And they don't write me Santa Claus letters anymore. They being the people that give me my presents on Christmas morning. Um, but, you know, so I'm out of practice in terms of proper gift opening etiquette, but I will improve, I promise. Got home from Europe in one piece. Here's a bit of fun to start off your final undergraduate semester. Epic high fives, weebs from six. Thank you, Sixy. So I always save these notes actually, and I, I don't know what to do with them. At some point, they're going to be overwhelming, and I'm gonna have to start doing something with them. I have no idea yet, but we'll see what I do. Uh, and Sixy has sent me Pulgasari. I'm scared. I don't know what this is. It was released in 2014. Okay, I'm gonna open this up to see what it is because I have no idea what this is. But you know what? We do regular movie nights slash game nights in the Discord, which you can find linked in the description down below. And so we can watch this together. How about if you feel so inclined, dear viewer? Okay. There is no information on this. This is, I'm scared. I'm gonna look this up. It's a 1985 North Korean dark fantasy action monster film directed by Shin sang no -kei and Chong go Jo. All right guys, if you would like to send me things in the mail, the PO box is, it can be found down in the description. And I check that maybe every two weeks now that I'm back home, back from break. It's a little hard to get there when it is that I am home, but now that I'm back, sorry, not at home. Now that I'm back, back at school, I can make it out there at least every two weeks. Maybe more if I feel so inclined. I don't, it's, a, it's a long ass drive, regardless. But, you know, I use that opportunity to listen to book tapes. Audible, audible, audio books, whatever. <sighs> Ugh. All right, I'm still feeling it from France, not gonna lie. I have the worst jet lag, so this is why I look like this. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. Until next time, sailors. Peace.